Okay, hello and welcome back. This is part two of uh, welding up uh, the uh, heavy duty diff pan for uh, the Defender Discovery and the Range Rover Classic. In this part we're going to be doing some measuring and then a little bit more measuring. We're then going to be doing the welding and then a leak test, rectification work and then finishing off. We'll be applying some high quality paint to the uh, toughest of industrial standards. What I'd like to say is the uh, power weld welder that we're using is an XT202, uh, which is AC-DC pulse. It's a TIG welder and also a stick welder, which is pretty damn good. Okay, if you're a bit shaky with stick welding or you want to know a little bit more of stick welding or you actually want to begin stick welding, head over to weld.com on YouTube and find the videos with Bob Moffat. He's a real-time welding teacher and uh, very good at what he does. However, I'm, um, well, I'll just do anything and everything that will help vehicles keep on the road. So, where were we? Right, we'd already got the diff pan and uh, we've welded up the seams inside and outside. And uh, you can see here that it, you know, well, hopefully that it's um, sealed completely. But we'll have to leak test this at the end of welding it to the axle, of course. So you remember I said that there was actually quite a lot of gap and uh, this is not very acceptable. It's not a good idea to weld into gaps, especially with stick welding, cause all sorts of problems. This is a three mil thick, so we have possibly about three mil to take off the uh, bottom of this pan. So what I have here is a differential, or actually it's called a final drive, but we've put the differential into the, the banjo casing and we still have this attacked in place. What I'd like to see first of all, and I'm uh, using something uh, called intrusive uh, inspections, I'm sure some of you have seen this in a hospital. What I'm looking for here is the space be between the crown wheel, and you can see the teeth on that, and the uh, the diff pan casing and uh, I'll just show you it down here okay there's actually quite a lot of space I'll just jump over onto the actual recording and uh, you'll see just to the uh, right of the screen the teeth look there's the gap which we'll see it later on and actually there's quite a lot of space up in there so we can cut some metal off quite easily so this uh, tool is actually very expensive uh, when I bought it you can nowadays get a, an endoscope or a ball scope, whatever you like, which you can put into your mobile phone, and these are probably about five or so. Yeah, you could do that if you wanted to. Now, these are the gaps I showed you in the video, and from the crown wheel, or the, the most, uh, the highest point of the crown wheel, um, it to the edge is about 11 millimeters, and don't ask me what that is in Imperial or American measurements, because I really don't know. Okay, so this steel rule is, uh, well, it's good enough at 20 degrees centigrade. We don't have to be that accurate. And I've used this uh, just as a very rough height guide. I think I need to get one for the workshop. But how I'm measuring this is a 90 degree angle. And I can see here that it is measuring out about, hang on, let's just have a look, 60 or 70. Okay, that's uh, 70 millimeters from the casing to the top of the crown wheel. So the next thing we need to do is measure the depth of the pan. And uh, this is quite easy to do using a straight edge and the ruler again. And if I zoom in here, you'll see that it comes out at 85. So we've got plenty of leeway there. Basically with a straight edge, you can see what sort of gaps you have, uh, how the grinding has um, been uneven because you'll never get anything completely accurate with grinding but you have to try your best to get it as flat as possible so anyway i'll just uh, quickly whip the diff out because we don't want to get any um swarf or anything on the diff mechanism at all and i'll turn this back round and we'll get on with a grinding this flat and i'll show you something else as well okay so basically yeah we uh we want to grind this as flat as possible and uh, any high spots or apparent high spots will get rid of. You can see that the uh, tacks here, which I uh, actually tack the, the pan to, they have got to be ground flat. And then the seam as well hasn't actually been finished on either side. So I'm going to grind this out and then weld it back up again. 
And basically we're just putting a little bit more um, strength into the casing possibly and you can see here I'm not actually being uh, over enthusiastic of putting too much weld down there because it will actually need to be ground flat but I did V it out so where the weld goes it will stick anyway right so the pan you can see there are two uh, extremely high spots one either end and I'm going to take those out first measure it and grind it flat I'm not going to take too much metal off and uh, believe it or not I didn't actually take too much off right so the inside is uh, cleaned up with a wire wheel and be careful of this because it throws some really nasty pieces of metal around okay this is just to get any of those uh, the buckshot or um, you know the tiny little ball bearings that are left the spatter and uh, it doesn't have to be too clean to remove the or to flatten out the weld should I say we're using an 80 grit flap wheel on the angle grinder and uh, believe me this uh, does flatten out the welds quite well you don't want to go uh, too crazy with it as you can see how quickly it works but to get a, a semi decent finish what we did was uh, flatten out the welds and then just run over the faces of the metal uh, it is almost like chiseling you have to be careful how you uh, how you use this because you can get the wrong profile but you can see what sort of effect we got here we're all right, almost polishing our helmet as it were remember in the uh, first part I told you that you need to position this diff cover so it's not going to catch the crown wheel anywhere so be aware of this that you need to move it over just as slightly so it's not going to catch the welds okay now the other thing which I'll show you here to position it correctly I've measured and uh, then take the center line to where the seam or the center of the uh, banjo um, casing is okay so that is roughly square and positioned I've turned the welder up to 110 amps because I want as much heat as I can get into it and I did experiment early so what I've done here is attack on the corners now after then what I've done is to weld on one side and I turned the uh, stand around so I could accommodate it and I did both sides uh, opposite to each other and this is the way you need to go is you do one line or one run of weld and then do the equal opposite to it this way it will pull itself square all the time and I'll just run a little bit of weld here you can see my rod angle in here and uh, I'm having to stitch it in as it were because it is this one is a little bit awkward it's not quite a fillet weld uh, however you would possibly call it a fillet weld okay so that's I've only done a short run here um, what I need to tell you really is that you need to keep this as, as cool as possible don't go crazy welding the whole lot up in one go do a bit of welding and let it cool down right so what I mean by stitching it is I'm actually doing it in circles and you can see the sort of weld effect I have here and this has given me time to actually push the weld into any of the gaps now um, as before in the last video I told you that I'd ground it back and then run the weld over where I ground so it's uh, we're not going to get any chance of a leak okay um, I'll just take the slag off here and you'll see what I've actually achieved on this doesn't look very pretty um, now what I'm saying about gaps here these can cause problems and you can get undercutting with this because when you push the weld in there it's uh, um, it gets a little bit too hot now I'll just run the weld on here and then I'll show you what I've actually achieved by it you probably notice that my welding helmet is uncomfortable right so rod angle is such and you can see I'm actually pushing it away from me at this time which is uh, another technique you can do with a stick obviously uh, you can experiment with angles obviously if you get it wrong grind it out and then re-weld it again and as I said, I uh, got some undercutting in here, which uh, you can see at the top here. Google it for examples of it, and you'll know exactly what I mean. 
Right, so the casing has been completely welded all the way around, and this took possibly about an hour. Now I'm going to let this cool completely, and then I'll clean it up and we'll get back to it. The welder here, the power weld welder, fantastic. I can't complain about this at the moment. And uh, you can see by the amount of trip hazards in the workshop that we really need to do something about it before we carry on. The axle casing, diff pan, everything else is now stone cold. And I'm going to do a leak test. What this involves is checking with a fluid and see if it leaks out of anywhere at all. Now, if you've done any engineering on a cylinder head, you've lapped valves in, you will use a paraffin. However, um, diesel is just as good. Do not use any type of solvent-based spirit that makes a lot of vapors. Basically, diesel fuel is good enough and, well, you can always reuse it. Now, you'll notice here that I'm filling it right up to where the weld is and slightly over the edge. And unfortunately, I spilt it everywhere and the diesel started leaking out of uh, one of the axle tube ends. I have to bend this down just a little bit so it's level and then what we're looking for is any leaking. Seen very clearly in this picture here is a uh, quite considerable drip. Now this would indicate a, a hole of some sort and actually it was not it turned out to be the bung plug which I fitted which is the old one from the old diff pan. I didn't want to damage the threads on this and it wasn't in a tight. So basically what I did was drain the diesel out uh, as far as I could and then fitted the magnetic plug that you get with the diff pan and then tightened it up. After then, I just filled it up and left it to see if there was any drips whatsoever. I did clean the diff pan out so it was dry and the floor as well. And it doesn't take long, but I left it a couple of hours, come back to see. And of course, there wasn't any leaking whatsoever. So a little bit of a confidence in my own welding ability here. But basically, this is uh, the cheap way of doing it. Now, just check it with a, a piece of dry paper. Any leaks whatsoever, you've got to find where they are and then rectify them. Diesel removed, of course, uh, via the bung plug. And then I removed the other bung plug and it took all the diesel out. Just to save you a little bit of heartache, it is worth removing every last drop of diesel and then wiping it out. This also acts as a cleaning agent. You can see here, I actually forgot that I'd, uh, I was going to weld up the corner here. Um, I did grind it out with the intent of welding it, so I'm just going to drop a weld on here. And I'll show you something after I've welded it, what exactly uh, happens even if you've got a little bit of diesel left in the casing. Now just watch as the smoke actually increases. This is not just from the... The uh, welding stick or the welding rod, you can see that that's a diesel vapour. If you had a considerable amount in there, it could turn into an explosive gas, so just be careful. Right then, the uh, presuming that everything goes well, if it doesn't, you'll have to uh, retest for leaks and then continue it until you've got it right. Now, um, you can see with stick welding, if the voltage is too high, and this is also with MIG welding, you get a uh, little um, shotgun pellets or... Um, a spatter and this spatter is an indication that the voltage is uh, too high. You can remove the, um, the spatter with uh, one of these 80 grit flat wheels however I will warn you that these are very aggressive and you've seen how it removes weld and on this part here around the bung plug it made a mess because I moved it a bit too quick and it started to mess the weld up. Anyway the job's done now and there's not much I can do about it unless I ground it out and put a weld in. Either way, it's still sealed. Okay, so what I'm saying here is I'm actually avoiding the weld completely with a flat wheel and just taking out the spatter so it looks a lot better. If you look at some jobs that have got spatter on them, it's not a pretty sight. Just to uh, polish off your welds, finish them off, clean up, you can use a wire brush. I would advise using a softer wire wheel brush rather than a knotted hard wire brush. These are a lot more gentle and uh, clean a lot of the crap out. As you can see here, I'm just removing the garbage which is uh, on the axle, taking some of the crap paint off that's been burnt. And basically this does actually do a little bit of polishing. Uh, however, what we're going to do here is, is paint it anyway. I just want to make it a little bit smoother and of course give it a key. 
You can see here the uh, pock marks from the uh, spatter that's actually burnt into the weld. Hopefully your welding will be much more um, proficient than mine. However, I'll give you an insight. Anywho, I'll just take the slag off here, then run a wire wheel on it. I actually decided to leave the weld in place because it really doesn't look out of place on this casing anyway after it's been painted. All right, so the paint we're using is a Corollas. Now, the top coats, you can get glass reinforced paint, which is good for abrasion, and the uh, undercoat and the rust killing primer, or basically a primer to use with a Corollas, is uh, something that we've painted axles and suspension parts before. So, if you're interested, have a look on our uh, main page. Drop down into playlists and you'll see the one Land Rover project painting techniques. Uh, click on that and you have a fair amount of videos there. Uh, axle painting, you've got three of them which will cover that. I've just basically quickly run a brush over this because I'm going to now put it up until we decide what we're going to do with it. Welding doesn't look absolute, absolutely brilliant but it's not out of place. Either way it's uh, fairly solid and it's going to stay under the vehicle. So I'm going to sit down and uh, have a roll up and think what the next thing to do is. Actually, no, I'm not. I've got to edit this video yet. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this.